one of the more popular supplements in recent years uh, among bodybuilders and fitness enthusiasts and all, also athletes has been a category called pre-workout supplements. Pre-workout supplements are basically meant to stimulate energy, increase workout intensity. Uh, some, well, you could say creatine is a pre-workout supplement, but it, it, it works a little bit differently. The um, usual pre-workout supplements contain a variety of ingredients, more than one ingredient. Uh, usually the main ingredient in most of the pre-workout supplements is caffeine. Caffeine, of course, is an alkaloid substance that has a proven track record of, uh, of uh, increasing uh, focus and increasing energy and lowering fatigue. Caffeine works by uh, interfering with uh, certain receptors called adenosine receptors. Uh, it's, it's, it's similar in structure to adenosine. Adenosine is a relaxing chemical in the brain. It also has a blood dilation quality. Uh, but the point being that when you take uh, caffeine, it basically uh, lowers uh, or I interferes with adenosine uh, by, inter by preventing the, uh, the, uh, the uh, interaction between adenosine and its receptors. And in doing so, it completely reduces fatigue because adenosine is one of the things that relaxes you and helps you fall asleep, and you don't want that before a workout. Besides caffeine, uh, a lot of the pre-workout ingredients contain various other substances. Unfortunately, in uh, most of these supplements, I should say, most of the uh, of the uh, substances that are added to various pre-workout powders uh, usually are fairly benign. A lot of them are plant extracts, stuff like ginseng, which isn't bad, uh, and there's various others that are t again touted to increase uh, energy and focus and uh, allow you to train harder basically and a lot of people swear by these uh, pre-workouts I've used a couple of them a couple of them weren't too bad I, I you know I really didn't notice much of a difference between taking the pre-workout uh, formulas and drinking a couple of cups of coffee <laughs> but that's just me uh, but a more recent trend in pre-workout supplements has been th the uh, idea of adding uh, actual stimulants um, there's one, for example, called DMAA. I'm not going to go into detail. There's about 10 others that have been used. Uh, and uh, but what these basically are are discarded stimulants that were developed as long ago as the early 1940s. They were originally used, uh, for example, to decrease nasal congestion, other, uh, other uses, uh, but they fell into disfavor because they had side effects, uh, maybe too much stimulation. I'm not really sure. But they were removed from the market. However, you know, some chemists or people working for supplement companies dug these out of obscurity. They started adding them to pre-workouts. And again, some of these uh, old stimulants aren't that far away from being methamphetamine. For example, even the famous, the famous supplement that was removed back in 2004 but still exists on the Internet, ephedrine. Uh, ephedrine was very popular fat burner, especially when combined with caffeine. And when ephedrine was combined with caffeine, it was extremely effective at promoting body fat loss when used, used in conjunction with a diet and exercise program, especially one that featured some aerobics for fat oxidation. Uh, ephedrine was removed from the market because um, it was thought to uh, stimulate, overstimulate the heart. And a couple of, there was some adverse reports uh, reported to the FDA, uh, which eventually led to the removal of ephedrine. However, ephedrine, this was a false uh, removal. It was bad. It was politically motivated because uh, the combination of ephedrine and caffeine was far more effective at promoting body fat loss than any of the existing uh, weight loss drugs that, that were around at the time in the pharmaceutical uh, companies. They have big bucks, big pockets. They control the FDA. And very few people know that the FDA was created to protect uh, pr uh, drug companies. That's what they actually do. So they, you know, they removed ephedrine from the market. But my point being, ephedrine was only one molecule away from being methamphetamine, which is actual speed. I mean, nothing speeds you up like speed. <laughs> it causes a lot of brain problems. It causes, you know, loss of your teeth makes you nuts gives you schizophrenic so speed should never be used as a workout stimulant although i know of a couple of top bodybuilders years ago who actually did use straight speed dexedrine and there's a couple others but the point being that um the uh, ephedrine is only one molecule away from being methamphetamine and 
the more recent stimulants that were dug out of obscurity and added to these uh, pre-workout supplements were likewise were basically uh, just kind of analogs of methamphetamine. Now, there's one in particular that showed up that seemed to be a little bit better than the others. I should add, in case you're wondering, the problem with these stimulants like DMAA and others, again, there's about 10 of the, 10 or more, I can't really remember them all, but uh, DMA, because of the way they work, they stimulate catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine, they raise the blood pressure. And uh, although some of these newer stimulants have been compared to drinking maybe two or three cups of coffee and the stimulation effect, unfortunately, some people who already have existing hypertension or high blood pressure, if they use these over-the-counter stimulants that are contained or were contained in some uh, pre-workout supplements, uh, a couple of people have gotten strokes and, uh, you know, not so much heart attacks, they've gotten strokes. And the biggest risk factor for a stroke is hypertension or higher blood pressure. So they were, you know, kind of FDA went after them. So they had a couple of, come up with some other ingredients. There's one called Sinephrine, which is, uh, that kind of was the replacement for ephedrine. It doesn't enter the brain as much as ephedrine does. So it has, um, it, it has a stimulant effect, but it's not nearly as great as ephedrine was. Some studies show it helps to oxidize fat when you use it in conjunction with uh, exercise, just like ephedrine did. And other studies show it has no such effect. So, you know, sinephrine isn't bad stuff. It's just not, it's kind of overhyped. It's not as good as people say. But the one I want to talk about today is, uh, again, shows up in various pre-workout. And it's also sold alone as a standalone supplement uh, because it's touted as a nootropic. A nootropic is a substance that increases basically cognition, thinking ability, memory, concentration, and focus. There's quite a few of them. This one is uh, was touted. Uh, this stuff called three. It's called theocrine. This is not to be confused with with theanine. Theanine is a completely different substance. Theanine is a substance der- derived from green tea. It's a unique and found. It's only found, as far as I know, in tea. Uh, theanine is a rela- just the opposite. It's a relaxing substance. Uh, if you take uh, theanine, can actually block or lower the excessive stimulation and jitteriness that some people feel when they take a little bit too much caffeine. You could say that theanine is a uh, is a antidote to caffeine uh, over anxiety, that type of thing. It can also be used to help you sleep. I use it for that purpose myself. I take about 200 milligrams as part of my sleep formula each night to go to sleep. It, it, uh, it doesn't actually knock you out. What it does is it relaxes you. And by relaxing you, if you take it with a couple of other supplements, it helps you fall asleep. Um, You could take theanine anytime uh, during the day. It increases what they call alpha waves. So basically what that means is it relaxes you, but it doesn't affect your focus and concentration. If anything, it will increase that because it's hard to focus and concentrate if you have a lot of anxiety. Anyway, so I'm talking about theocrine, not theanine. This is theocrine. Theocrine is basically the best way to describe it. It's uh, it's caffeine with an added methyl and ketone group chemically. So it looks just like caffeine, and strangely enough, it works just like caffeine. The main way that theanine, I'm sorry, theocrine acts as a stimulant is that it also inhibits adenosine. Adenosine is a, again, relaxing chemical, and by inhibiting de- adenosine, you'll feel more awake and have a little bit more vigor. Uh, now, uh, according to studies, theocrine has about two-thirds the stimulant potency of caffeine. In other words, it doesn't; it's not quite as strong as caffeine as, as a stimulant, but the advantage of uh, theoc- uh, theocrine, and you see this in a lot of ads for theocrine, is that it, um, it there's no, uh, you don't get used to it. In other words, there's a tolerance. If you're a habitual caffeine user, or drinker, you know, if you drink coffee every day, for example, after a while, you're going to get less and less of a stimulant effect from caffeine. Uh, and also, the problem with caffeine is that caffeine peaks in about one to two hours. It lasts for six hours, but the peak stimulation effect only lasts for two hours. Theocrine supposedly lasts for eight hours. And again, you never develop a tolerance for it. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm looking at a study here. That's actually the purpose of this video because I thought this study was kind of intriguing because um, 
There, have, there hasn't been that many studies on theocrine. There's been a one human study that showed it helped uh, aerobic and endurance training. Another study showed that it helped strength training by, again, increasing, uh, you know, by, by increasing your focus and concentration and giving a sense of greater energy so you could train more intensely. That's the existing studies on theocrine up till now. This, uh, I should also point out that theocrine is a natural substance. It's derived from a, uh, a substance called kucha. There's a, a kucha tea that many people drink. Uh, strangely enough, kucha tea, uh, the, the, re the reason they drink that, that's actually a relaxing tea. And this is the interesting thing about theanine is that uh, if you take it in low doses, it, ha it acts as a relaxant. It helps you relax. But if you take it in higher doses, it acts as a stimulant, or I could have that backwards, I'm not sure. But anyway, it can have both stimulant and relaxing effects. That's the point. Um, uh, so anyway, this study, they wanted to look at, uh, uh, you know, they wanted, they did a various, a number of physical tests. Let me read you directly from this study. The, stu uh, the studies on theocrine are scarce. Therefore, this study is a randomized controlled trial Randomized control trial is considered the gold standard of studies. It involves a placebo group and you know blah blah blah. It's it's considered a much more controlled study. It's considered the best type of study. This study is a randomized control trial that aimed to verify the effects of theocrine stimulation uh, supplementation on, of, of a physical performance in young male athletes by applying a battery of physical tests. Twenty-two male amateur flag football athletes were recruited. I'm not sure what flag football is. I, 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 I'm guessing it's, a, it's involved in soccer because in Europe they call soccer football. So I'm guessing. I don't know. Subjects were divided into two groups and assessed at two moments, which were 72 hours apart. The first assessment, assessment served as a basal or, or you know, me, you know, basal measurement. In the second, the subjects integrated the, the supplement or a placebo 60 minutes before the following tests. S uh, sextuple jump, what the hell that is. Agility T test, 30 minute sprint, 40, 40 second run test, and a 12 minute run test, is also known as a Cooper test. And anyway, the study results show there was no difference between the groups that took theocrine and the groups that took a placebo. In other words, theocrine had no er ergogenic effect whatsoever but um, by the way the average age of the study subjects was 19 years of age so they were young they were in good health there wasn't any met pre uh, pre-existing medical problems with any of them uh, let me just get to the rest of this stuff so it says that um, two of the, I mentioned these previous studies on theocrine one of these studies conducted by Bello et al. in 2019 evaluated 24 footballers of both sexes, 10 men and 14 women. The subjects carried out the test in four different conditions, namely 275 milligrams of theocrine or 275 milligrams of caffeine, or both combined with 20, 125 milligrams of theocrine and 150 milligrams of caffeine, or ingesting a capsule that contained a placebo. A treadmill run test was conducted until fatigue at an intensity of 5, 85% of VO2 max. That's pretty high intensity, as well as cognitive or brain tests, you know, to measure the effect of theocrine on brain function. Uh, the run test was conducted after a football match simulated on a treadmill. The athletes ran for 45 minutes, rested for 15 minutes, then ran for another 45 minutes at similar intensities to those executed during a typical fit football match. Uh, the authors found only a tendency for improvement for three intervention groups compared to the placebo group. In other words, the theocrine didn't seem to do much in that study. Another study from 2000, two, 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 2019 assessed 12 men trained in a crossover model which evaluated the acute effects of theocrine over maximum strength and force resistance. This would be applicable, applicable to anyone obviously involved in bodybuilding or strength. For this, the subject carried out a maximum repetition, one rep, one rep test in the bench press and squat. They also carried out the maximum repetitions possible in the two exercises with a relative load 
of 72% of, uh, that's moderate weight, of one rep. As in the previous study, the tests were conducted in four conditions, ingesting the supplementation 90 minutes before the tests, namely 300 milligrams of caffeine or 300 milligrams of theocrine, or a combination of 150 milligrams of theocrine and 150 milligrams of caffeine, or a placebo. The subject's fatigue and motivation were also out evaluated. The results showed there was no difference between the groups. Only the, ca- the group that took 300 milligrams of caffeine showed a significant increase in energy and motivation, and that's what most studies show. Caffeine does work. And in case you're wondering, the, uh, they just came out with a new study. The ideal ergogenic dose, meaning the dose that will increase workout focus concentration and give you some stimulation effect, if you want to try caffeine, is 3 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. That equals about to a 200-pound guy. It's about three cups of coffee. <clears throat> okay. Uh, anyway, so th- like I said, this new study, uh, this study was published in a journal called the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health. Just came out, basically shows that, uh, you know, as I said, I just basically went over the two previous human studies on theocrine, and they really, really were, didn't show much at all. Uh, why creatine is touted as a ergogenic aid or even as a stimulant comparable to caffeine, I guess, stems from the fact that it's very similarly structured to caffeine. Like I say, it only differs by two, uh, two changes in the structure, in addition of a methyl and a ketone group. Other than that, it's caffeine, uh, but it has two-thirds of the stimulation of caffeine. So based on that, you would think that theocrine would be an effective uh, pre-workout stimulant. Unfortunately, it is not. It is basically useless. So anyway, I'm, I'm, that's, all I, that's all I could really say about the- theocrine. Just wanted to let everyone know that you know if, you're, uh, if you see theocrine uh, touted online as a nootropic or an ergogenic aid, pass. Don't waste your money. Uh, by the way, I have tried theocrine. I've taken it instead of caffeine, and I don't notice. Uh, and it, there's like no comparison. You hardly feel theocrine. I mean, you, you don't get much of a stimulant effect at all. The same dose of caffeine, I definitely get a stimulant effect. So theocrine, uh, I'd have to point out, I don't know if I should call it completely worthless because it might be good, useful for other purposes that they haven't investigated yet. But as a ergogenic aid, meaning something that will increase work efficiency, training focus and, and intensity, uh, help you exercise longer and that kind of thing, theocrine fails. It's a failed supplement in that category. So if you're looking for uh, to purchase theocrine as a stimulant, save your money and buy something else that does work. And if, you're gonna, if you are going to use pre-workout formulas, look at the label. And, uh, you know, look for chemicals. Uh, if you're not sure of a, a chemical, sometimes they put the chemical names on, on the ingredient list where you're not sure what it is. Others are more obvious, like, uh, you know, caffeine and ginseng. But if you're not sure of a, of a particular ingredient on a pre-workout, my suggestion is to look it up. Go online and look it up and find out uh, what it is. Find, uh, you should be able to also notice if there's any uh, side effects associated with it or where it came from, and this and that, and, you know, where the current stand is on its use legally, that type of thing. So I'll end it here, and, but if you, want more nutri- uh, if, you, if you want more information about nutrition, I need a stimulant now myself. I have had my coffee today. Anyway, if you need more information about nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, ergogenic aids, ergogenic aids that work, uh, supplement science, which supplements work, which ones don't, effective fat loss techniques, hormonal therapy, women's health and fitness, many, many other topics. Nobody covers as many topics as I do in my Applied Metabolics. It's at www.appliedmetabolics.com, 30 to 45 pages every month. No ads, comes out on the first of every month. Uh, I don't push any products. I'm not aligned or, or associated with any supplement company, so you'll only get the truth from me. Actually, I'm one of the only, I'm one of the last people on the internet that's not I'm not paid off by somebody to push something. I only have my publication. That's it, and it's 100% truth. Uh, you could look check my background. I've been a writer for over 40 years. I know how to write for the public. I, I've worked for several ma- many magazines over a 35-year period. 
Uh, so I have a good qualifications, I think you'll find. Uh, I've also been involved in study and research on my own for uh, at least, uh, you know, 60, uh, over 60 years. So, uh, so subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Uh, when you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information on uh, exercise, nutrition, and general health. I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics website where current subscribers only can send me uh, short questions, anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics, or any other question that comes to mind, I'll, I'll answer them. As uh, because of my appreciation for their subscription, it's like a bonus for the subscription for subscribing to Applied Metabolics. Again, it's www.appliedmetabolics.com. And what else could I say? Uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. And thank you for listening.